what do you dream about? Home. Home. What's that like? This is an experience that I will never get back. I don't want to say that. I mean, an experience that I will forever remember. I don't know why I said that in Arabic. Um, but I think I should say that. I don't know if it's like it's uh, it's a dream come true, you know. Um, and I'll keep saying that. I don't know if Also, I'm not sure if it's Saudi Arabia. Let's make it in Arabic, right? Right or wrong? Right. The journey that I took last year, which was the highlight of my 2023, that was my Umrah trip, a trip that I did not imagine would happen anytime soon. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He made it possible for me, and there was no plan. There was no money saved up for it, but there was pure desire, intention, love, and just yearning to be at the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that dream come true for me. So my journey to the Harameen started on April 7, 2023. Many of you would like to know how that happened, and I would like to tell you guys um, so in 2023, um, March, I went to, I lived in Istanbul at the time, so I came in Ankara for a whole different reason, and one day me and my friend were, um, at the market, we were trying to get some stuff, and she saw this poster with, um, information about Umrah trips and all of that, and she told me, she was like, oh my god, they have Umrah trips here, and it was fairly cheap, and I came back to, it was two days before Ramadan, so I came back to Istanbul and some it was just stuck in my head. Something about it, I just couldn't get it out of my head. I kept thinking about that and I told my friend, could you please get me the number of that person and I would like to ask them some few questions about the trip and all of that. After that, I was constantly thinking about just why not drop everything and go to Umrah. And to backtrack a little bit, at the time I was going through a lot of stuff. Um, it was a very hard time for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that this is the perfect moment for me to just leave everything. So my friend got me the number. I contacted the person. The brother was very, very nice. And he walked me through the whole trip and how everything is going to go. It was 15 day trip. We were going to stay 4 days in Medina and 11 days in Mecca. And it was the time of my life. It was absolutely amazing, unbelievable. Like the whole trip was very surreal. And me being the type of person that I am, even when I got the visa, even when I got the ticket, I was telling my family and my friends and I was ecstatic. But at the same time, it was, you know, too... I don't know how to say, but I was like, am I going to Umrah? Like, is this my reality? Am I going to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I was like, the only time that I will truly, you know, I don't know, like truly believe that this is my reality is when I stand in front of the Kaaba. So I left from Istanbul with a group and we went to Jeddah, that was the first stop, and then to Medina. Stayed there for four days. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of footage of Medina because I was too immersed in the moment. And as you can imagine, everything was like happening all at once. So getting distracted with my phone was not in the option. And I, I stayed there, it was very lovely, amazing. One of the highlights of Medina on the emotional side, if I'm being honest, was that I did not get to enter the Rauda. It was very sad, to be honest. Um, it was very uh, devastating emotionally, like it was very heartbreaking for me. Uh, I did not know that you should book a slot beforehand and that's why I could not get into the Rauda. But nevertheless, I still tried to enter. There's a long queue after Taraweeh and after Fajr, those of you who went know, and especially during Ramadan. And I would go and uh, be in that queue. It's very long, it takes hours, and then <laughs> you get rejected because you do not have the appointment. But that there was one night that I tried three times and I was hoping every time I was praying that maybe somehow they will let me in. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fine, is going to find a way and I'm going to enter the Rauda. 
but subhanallah it did not happen so that night what happened was subhanallah it felt like i was living in a kind of a simulation you know and i could not tell if this is a reality or if i'm really there because it felt like i was not there you know a deja vu moment if you would say um so it was like i was really in a dream like i was questioning my reality i was like is this am i really here it's, it felt like i was re-watching of something that i did i was i was like taking steps that i have already taken it was like i was in a place that i have been before i could not tell if this was like wallahi it was like very very confusing for me subhanallah but also it's one of the highlights of that uh, of my time in medina i stayed in medina four days it was lovely amazing uh so surreal and then we went to um mecca and mecca it was a whole different um it was subhanallah like i had 11 days that was very beautiful at times i wished if i could stay longer i wished if i could live there forever um it was it was unbelievable it was really beautiful um the first time that i saw kaaba was like the night we entered Madi we entered Madi in we entered mecca uh, around maghrib and so we were performing umrah on the same night because we were on ihram and then we went to the haram was very beautiful and we performed our umrah alhamdulillah rabbil alameen and on that night sheikh sudaisi was leading the tahajjud subhanallah it was very like someone that you grew up hearing when i was younger all i could hear was him and subhanallah hearing that his voice while he was leading salah was also very a surreal moment for me and i stayed there 11 days like i said on eid al-fitr subhanallah we kind of undermined how many people were going to be at the haram so we were a little bit late and we did not get a space like we couldn't even get close to the masjid we prayed in the streets subhanallah but nonetheless it was very beautiful and amazing <laughs> And then I went to Jeddah for my family but before I get into that I wanted to kind of uh, give you a background of how everything started and how everything went but I'm going to section the next part of this video into mainly three parts I have my notes here and I'm going to start with the things that you must have before you go to Umrah there are things that you need to have that might not be in my list but just this is just my experience and the thing and the things that I think um, if you're going to Umrah, you should have. Um, so the first thing is, I think everyone knows this, um, but I'm just gonna throw it in here, is that you should not pack, like you should pack very lightly, don't overdo it, um, take, if you're a sister, you just need few abayas and, and I would suggest to go with black because everyone's wearing black, like majority of the people are wearing black and if you take a uh, color for hijabs, you don't want to stand out. So I, w I took like a couple of abayas, mostly very dark uh, colors, brown and um, black. So um, I would say, yeah, back very lightly. And one other thing is, it's very hot guys it's very very hot okay and if you're a sister you're wearing like layers of clothes and it's going to be very difficult like so i would say take a mini fan um it's very important i did not take it but i think next time that i'm going to umrah inshallah i would take a mini fan with me so take a mini fan i'm gonna put one here for you guys to kind of see um, the other thing that a lot of co people questioned where I got was I took a lanyard. Is it a lanyard? I don't know how to say that. It's a lanyard phone case. I was uh, putting it around my neck because I sometimes forget my phone. So what I before I even uh, left Istanbul, I got this lanyard for it and then I would just put it around my neck and it would just stay there. And a lot of people really asked me about it. Where did you get it? Some sisters were like, what, did you get it from Saudi? I was like, no, I, I got it from Istanbul. Um, one other thing is take medicine. 
medicine guys like medicine is very important and i i took my vitamins i took a lot of painkillers i took my grain patches because i get headaches all the time so take medicine a lot of people got very very sick and when i say sick i really mean it because the brothers that were with us they they could not hold their fast there. like everyone is getting this like i don't even know if it was a flu because people had like severe fever they couldn't hold their fast and they were not living at the hotel they were just staying in the hotel for a couple of days so it was really bad i also got sick but for me it was only like a a, a flu like a normal flu it did not get into a, a, a severe state you know so take your medicine also take a first aid kit because kit because you will need it take disinfectant wipes and also take hand spray i took this uh, hand spray and i remember before i thought i would just clean my hands and everyone would be like okay give it to me give it to me and i would just go around rows of people because they all wanted it and subhanallah i think that was very helpful one thing that i did not take that you should definitely take that i'm going to take next time that i go to amra is power bank uh, guys i did not know that there would be not enough sockets um, i don't use power banks uh, in my life normally and that's why i did not take but when i went to umrah there was no sockets like you will barely find any sockets so i would say take power bank with you and also i think i think it was a blessing in disguise because subhanallah i was not using my phone and i was not getting distracted my phone because my phone was dead the whole time i would just go to the haram and my phone is kind of battery low and then my phone would die and I would come back to the hotel late at night like after after the hajjud so take your power bank with you guys one other thing that I cannot stress enough is guys use the language it doesn't matter if you know alif bata it doesn't matter okay just try to use Arabic when you're there the taxi drivers and all of that they will try to rip you off so try to use the Arabic try to come up as someone who lived here I don't know just use your Arabic I when I was there I was acting like I own the place I was like had <laughs> so use your Arabic guys use your Arabic really the next section is things that I definitely miss when I was in um, Mecca or both at the Haramein um, one thing that really comes to mind is Samsam water guys me and Samsam water I love Samsam water okay and I made sure that I drank enough Samsam water while I was there and so I miss that because you don't get Samsam water in it, like every day um, also this is kind of uh, different but i when i was there there was this constant reminder of death because after every salah almost after every salah there would be salat janasa <laughs> It was my first time in my whole life that I prayed Salat Janasa, and so after Taraweeh, after Duhur, there would be Salat Janasa, and it was like this constant reminder of death, of like where we are all headed. You know what I mean? So I also miss that constant reminder. The other thing that I really miss is like there was this halal competition between the sisters. We don't even know each other, but when we are like every day, if I'm sitting uh, with a group of sisters, we would get to know each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we would become like subhanAllah, like we would compete with each other in a halal way. Like, okay, which juice are you on? I'm like, I am on just this number. And she was like, oh, I'm, I am a bit behind. Uh, and then she would be like, okay, I'm going to catch up. And it was this... Also, there was this halal panther sometimes. There would be hours that we are sitting with each other and everyone is just reading their Quran. So that's something that I definitely miss. Okay, let's get to the next section of this video, which is the challenges that you will be faced when you go there. I, before I went, I have watched a lot of videos about Amra experience, of other people's Amra experience, and one thing that they have they had in common was like, oh my god, you're going to be tested. And subhanAllah, I did not, like, I, I was kind of somehow ready for that. So when I went to Umrah, I was like, kind of mentally prepared that there were things that, are go that were going to happen to me. And other than people getting sick, one thing that happened to me was like, I lost my wallet, I lost my glasses, and I was also tested with people. I have dealt one of the most hard, you know, the hardest people to deal with in my whole life. And subhanAllah, I'm a kind, I would like to believe that I'm a very chill person and I don't cause problems and all of that, but it was a whole different uh, type of, uh, you know, situation when I was there. So be prepared to be tested. 
So let's start 